GraphQL is an awesome tool to improve the communication between your front end and your back end. So let's take a look at when you might want to use it and when you might not want to use it. Okay, so let's first of all reiterate why we actually use GraphQL. So in a normal restable world, you'd have an object like a comment that you can fetch as a single entity or as a list of entities from the server. And it might have an ID, a message, and a user ID. And now if you want to also get the username to display it next to the content, you might need a user object from the backend as well. And that user object would of course also have an ID that you need to connect in the front end to the user ID. And the user might have a name and an H. So there are multiple problems with this solution. First of all, I need to fetch the comment. And then for this comment, I'll need to fetch the user as well to get its name. And also I get some additional information like the H or these IDs, which I don't really necessarily need to display it in the front. So what I can do with GraphQL is I can actually tell the server directly what I need and in which configuration. So I can tell the server, okay, I want a comment. And from that comment, I want certain pieces of information. In this case, I just want the message because the ID is not important to me. And then I can actually nest information. So I can also get a user inside of this comment by basically allowing the backend to connect these IDs for me. And then I only want the name of the user. So if the age, for example, would be calculated by the backend, then the backend wouldn't need to do this for this call because I am not asking for the age. And the age is also not transmitted over the network, so I save a bit of bandwidth, which is quite awesome. Okay, so now that we've gone through this in theory, let's take a look at how it actually works in practice. Because I've prepared a little GraphQL backend right here that contains exactly the same information, so comments with IDs and messages and a user that has an ID, a name, and an age. And now we can basically do a GraphQL call against my self-written backend right here, and we get two comments, both from Max, where he's asking, hello, is anyone here? But we might not need all of this information, so we can just get rid of this ID, get rid of this H, and now we just get the information that we need and nothing more, but we still have the advantage of nesting information so that we don't need to do as many calls. Alright, so before we can now go into why we might not want to use it, even though it seems quite awesome, let's first of all take a look at how to actually use this in the front end, so that we can get a better look at how it actually works under the hood. Okay, so to get started actually implementing GraphQL inside of React, you'd need to install at Apollo Client and GraphQL, which I've already done, so we are not going to do that now but it will be necessary for you to do for the upcoming steps. So first of all, we're going to head to our main.jsx and here we're going to import Apollo client from at Apollo client. And we're also going to need some additional information like an Apollo provider to actually embed it into a React app and an in-memory cache so that we can cache some of our results so that we don't need to bother the server for every request we do. And now to get that, we can just say const client equals new Apollo client and this Apollo client is going to get a configuration object. And that configuration object will contain two strings. First of all, the URI, which we saw previously in our graph IQL interface right here. It's just going to be localhost 4000 slash GraphQL in this case. And then we'll also need a cache. And that's just going to be a new in memory cache to allow us to cache some information. So now let's just wrap that around the wrap using the Apollo provider, add a client to it, which will just be our client we just created. So now we can head into the app.jsx to actually use our client. Okay, so now inside of our app.jsx, we can do the next import, which is gonna be GQL, which will allow us to do GraphQL queries inside of our JavaScript. We're gonna import that from Apollo client, and then we're already gonna create a little query. So it's gonna be get comments, because for now we just want to get every comment, no user information, nothing at all, just the comments, and we'll add a formatted string after. And inside of that, we can say query, and we want to query every comment, so comments, and here we want to get only the messages. And now to actually use that, we can say const, find an empty object, and say that equals use query, which is a custom hook that allows us to use these GQL queries. And here, this is really similar to something like React Query, for example. So you get a loading object, an error object, and data. And what you can do now is head into our app and say, if we are loading, then we want to display a paragraph that says loading, dot, dot, dot. If we are in an error state, then we want to display error, dot, dot, dot. And if we've already gotten our data because the request went through, then we want to say data, dot, comments, dot, map. And then for each comment, we can basically just go ahead and display it. 
by just saying we ran it in a paragraph tag and here we can say see that message now if we save this and head back to wrap we can see hello and is anyone here which is exactly what we wanted because it's the same that we get when we fetch our data directly from the backend but now we might also want to display who sent the data so normally we now need to do an extra request if we were using rest but because we are using graphql and we've told the backend developers that we also need the user to go with our comments we can now just say okay user and for this user we want the name and this is going to be c.user.name and now if we reload we can see max colon hello and max colon is anyone here and that's basically how simple it is to use graphql in the front end to communicate with the backend that already supports all the information we need but that specific issue might be why you'd not want to use it because let's say you wanted to fetch something else like you don't want to get the comments but you want to get the users well that's still possible using graphql of course you could do something like user and for the user you want to get the name that's totally fine but now let's say you expect that you would be able to also get a comment or the comments of every user it seemed like it would be possible and it would graphql definitely supports that feature with no struggle whatsoever and now we just want to get the message for example but the issue with that approach is that the backend developer will need to have implemented this and if they didn't get notified that this was a use case that would be required then they probably won't have done that. So for internal use, this can be awesome because you can communicate back and forth between the front end and the backend developer and everything will be fine and dandy. But if your service is used by another company, then you can actually get into some trouble because yeah, you can't communicate as easily with someone external. So this will create lots of extra effort, which will basically mean that everyone will just need to fetch all the objects separately using this user call and this comment call without nesting which will then basically turn it into REST with extra steps because now you need all the GraphQL logic on top of what basically is REST to just fetch normal objects. So for internal communication between services or between frontends and services, this is awesome. But for external communication, yeah, you might want to stick to REST. But now you might have found out that you can actually use GraphQL and would really like to do it. So how about you check out this video where I'll actually also show you how to globalize the state because right now it's quite localized to allow you to actually use it anywhere in your application without using an external library. Check it out.